welcome in Pastor Juliet Hampton from the Nebraska Synod. She is here to officially install me this morning as your pastor. So um, after today, there's no turning back. Now you're officially going to be stuck, all right? So if you have any objections, you better holler them out here pretty soon before we get to that portion of the worship. But it is a joy to be with you. Uh, it was a snowy morning, uh, but I'm so very grateful that we are together to worship our God, to hear from His Holy Word, and to be His people together. So just a few announcements. Immediately after worship, we will go into our annual meeting. We will hold our annual meeting here in the sanctuary, uh, so you don't have to go anywhere. Our kids, our Sunday school students, will be going into the parlor to watch a video this morning so that our Sunday school teachers can be here for our annual meeting. I'm going to ask our confirmation students to please help supervise and make sure uh, that the video and the Sunday school go as well. So confirmation students, if you would please help out with that video this morning as well. I believe we have some worshiping in their vehicles this morning. If you would, please welcome us into worship this morning by giving us a nice honk of amen this morning. All right, amen. Every time I do that, I get a little bit nervous, thinking, well, what if there's nobody out there? But every time they, they reply. Lastly, there's some big football games tonight, and I think we know for sure that God is a Chiefs fan because of the snowstorm seems to be going right over Kansas City. It's a night game and a snow day tomorrow, so... Uh, God is a Chiefs fan, but we've got some good games to watch this, this afternoon and tonight. Uh, but it's just so good to be God's people together. Would you please rise as we sing our opening song, which once again you can find on your screens. It is a beautiful one. Turn from you. 
You call, but we do not listen. You show us your path, but we prefer our own way. Forgive us, heal us, and lead us back to you, that we might show mercy to others. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. In Jesus Christ, you are forgiven by God and given new life. Let us pray together the prayer of the day. The form of this world is passing away. Therefore, help us to keep our focus on you, Lord. For true power and steadfast love belong to you. Amen. May I have the children come on up? <laughs> so cool. And then Jonah is living in the whale's belly for three days. And you know why he was in the whale's belly for three days? Because Jonah needed a safe place. He needed a place that he could go away, get away from all of the noise, all of the sound, and just relax and pray. Now, I imagine living in a whale's belly. Do you think that sounds good? <laughs> no, it felt disgusting. But it was also a reminder for Jonah that even when things seem so bad and there's no hope, that God always sets a place for us that can be safe. What I need you to do this week is think about Jonah and think about his house and think about where you can feel safe and take time out of prayer. It can be under your bed. It can be in your closet. It can be in a reading chair or a special nook. But find a place in your house that's quiet that you can go away and pray. Because we all know what you're doing this week. Yes. Thank you. Thank you for coming out. And do you guys want to stay up here? Or do you want to go back to your place? <laughs> <laughs> if you want to hang out with me, that's fine. But if you'd like to go back.
A reading from Jonah, third chapter. The word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time, saying, Get up, go to Nineveh, that great city, and proclaim it, proclaim to it the message that I tell you. So Jonah set out and went to Nineveh, according to the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh was an exceedingly large city, a three days walk across. Jonah began to go into the city, going a day's walk. And he cried out, Forty days more, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. And the people of Nineveh believed God. They proclaimed a fast, and everyone, great and small, put on sackcloth. When God saw what they did, how they turned from their evil ways, God changed his mind about the calamity that he had said he would bring upon them. And he did not do it. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. We will read Psalm 62, verses 5 through 12 responsibly. For God alone I wait in silence. Truly my hope is in God. God alone is my rock and my salvation, my stronghold, so that I shall never be shaken. In God is my deliverance and my honor. God is my strong rock and my refuge. Put your trust in God always, O people. Pour out your hearts before the one who is our refuge. Those of high degree are but a fleeting breath. Those of low estate cannot be trusted. Placed on the scales together, they weigh even less than a breath. Put no trust in extortion. In robbery, take no empty pride. And though wealth increase, set not your heart upon it. God has spoken once, twice I have heard it, that power belongs to God. Steadfast love belongs to you, O Lord, for you repay all according to their deeds. A reading from 1 Corinthians, the 7th chapter. Brothers and sisters, the appointed time has grown short. From now on, let even those who have wives be as though they had none and those who mourn as though they were not mourning, and those who rejoice as though they were not rejoicing, and those who buy as though they had no possessions, and those who deal with the world as though they had no dealings with it. For the present form of the world is passing away. Word of God, word of life. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Glory to you, O Lord. As Jesus passed along the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And Jesus said to them, Follow me, and I will make you fish for people. And immediately they left their nets and followed him. As he went a little farther, he saw James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, who were in their boat mending their nets. Immediately he called them. And they left their brother Zebedee in the boat, and with the hired men, and followed him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. Would you please stand, if you're able, as we sing our hymn of the day, which is, We Are Marching in the Light of God.
process moved most quickly during the pandemic. Like, it's been years. Think of how you as a people have changed since Pastor Joel was here. How have you grown? Who's come in? Who's not here anymore? And what will happen next? It's a time of excitement and joy, and it's wonderful to be talking about call and vision as you all look to the future of what will be next. I'm thankful that Casey let me preach today on the Gospel of Mark because it's so much fun. I love Mark because I think he, he may have had some difficulty paying attention to things. So he kind of is like me. Because did you notice, twice already in our reading today, they use the word immediately. Everything happens in Mark immediately. They don't take time, they don't think about things, they don't ponder, so they definitely weren't Lutheran. They <laughs> do everything right now, right now it's happening. And Mark is so excited about this story, and so excited about calling the disciples, that Mark doesn't even start with a Christmas story. He starts with Jesus was born, and then he turns to John. And he talks about John's ministry, and then he talks about Jesus' ministry. And that's where we are today. As Jesus goes around collecting disciples and having them go with him to see what's next. Now, Jesus was out in the wilderness. You know, he's out doing his thing. He's out walking around. He's not in a home. He goes down the lake. And he sees fishermen, and he says to them, come with me and I'll make you fishers of people. We all know the song from Sunday school. We love this passage. But we don't often think about what this means. Imagine if somebody walked up to the family farm that's been in your family for generations and said, leave everything and come with me. What would that do to your family? I imagine that there would be some very strong words. And there had to be very strong words from their family members at this point. What are you doing? Where are you going? Why are you following this man? He doesn't even have any money. This was crazy. And sometimes we turn the craziness of the Bible into everyday things. Jonah was swallowed by a whale. <laughs> That's crazy. These disciples left everything. They left security, they left their homes, they left their families, and they went out wandering with Jesus. Sometimes that's what call is. The other fascinating piece about this part of the story is that there's the word follow me. Now, everybody knows follow is a verb, and this is where I get a little English teacher in it. You just can't put away a teacher once you've been a teacher. <laughs> This is what's called a present verb. So it's something that has happened, that happens right now, and continues to happen. So Jesus saying to the disciples, follow me, isn't a one-time action. It's a daily action. Every day we're being called to follow, and follow again, and turn back towards God, and turn back towards the work that we need to do. Because we need to always focus on what's next. Because you see, there's, there's something so fascinating about doing the work that you all do. No one else can do it. No one else has ever been the pastor of the Beamer Lutheran Church in Hooper, Nebraska, Hooper, Nebraska during a pandemic. Only Pastor Casey can. Pastor Joel was here before, and who knows what's going to happen next? Who knows where you'll walk together? That's the other fascinating piece of where you all sit in the ministry that you all do, is that no one who's been here before knows how to minister to the people of Hooker now, the way you do. No one who sat in your pew before, and no one who will sit in your pew eventually. No one knows how to do your work. Ooh, that's exciting. <laughs> things happen together. And things are always working. As we've just seen, people are called to so many different pieces of ministry. 
EMTs, nurses, and doctors are in a more difficult position than they've ever been in before. I have to answer that call. That's not just a piece of what they'd like to do, but it's their call from God to be God's people. Each one of us is called to do something different. Nurses, doctors, farmers, musicians are all called to do God's work. This day, this passage calls you to do it well. And to do it with the most grace and integrity that you can. Sometimes making interesting or difficult choices. Now, a couple of months ago, you as a congregation met. And you said that you would love to have Pastor Casey as your permanent pastor. And Pastor Casey also responded by saying that he would love to be your permanent pastor. But Pastor Casey, I need to confess, knowing this congregation for the last couple of years, they sometimes make bad choices. <laughs> <laughs> and congregation, also knowing Pastor Casey for the last couple of years, you need to know he sometimes makes bad choices. <laughs> Your coming together is not one of those bad choices. But there will be times as you walk forward in your relationship together that you're not going to like what the other person is doing. I'm sorry, but that's what ministry is. And so it's the best of relationships, but it's also the most difficult. Because everyone here does have their own call, as does Pastor Casey. So that you're called to be unified and come together. That's the best part of all of this. Is this isn't just a party and an annual meeting to go on as usual. This is a celebration of what can be. This day, we come together to celebrate a new relationship. It's a new thing that's happening. Thank you for doing this during a crazy time in our world. Thank you for thinking about what's next and what could be and what's possible. Thank you for being the people that God needs you to be here. Thanks for letting me be a part of it. So Pastor Casey, can I have you stand up please? Carter Dom, if you'd come forward, please. Oh, she said the furthest back <laughs> possible thing she could sit in. She supervises back there. <laughs> I said to Carter, too, it's so nice to see her in person instead of just hearing her voice over the phone. It's like we have a whole new relationship with her in person. Sure. So having been authorized by the church to install Casey John Lindman, our co-worker in the gospel, as your pastor, I now ask for certification of this call. After prayerful deliberation, we of Redeemer Lutheran Church in Hooker have called Casey Lindman as pastor. I present him this letter certifying the call. Twice if you do. Great. So we're going forward. A reading from John. Jesus said, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. A reading from Matthew. Jesus said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disabled disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always. 
to the end of the age. A reading from John. Jesus said, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. Now, that was a, a quiz just to make sure y'all were following along because we already read that one. <laughs> so, Casey, in the presence of this assembly, will you commit yourself to this new trust and responsibility in the confidence that it comes from God through the call of the church? I will, and I ask God to help and guide me. Will you preach and teach in accordance with the Holy Scriptures and with the confessions of the Lutheran Church? Will you carry out this ministry in harmony with the Constitution of the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America? I will, and I ask God to help and guide me. Will you be diligent in your study of the Holy Scriptures and in your use of the means of grace? Will you love, serve, and pray for God's people, nourishing them with the Word and sacrament? and leading them by your own example in faithful service and holy living. I will, and I ask God to help and guide you. Will you give faithful witness in the world, that God's love may be known in all that you do? I will, and I ask God to help and guide you. Almighty God, who has given you the will to do these things, graciously give you the strength and compassion to perform them. Amen. Now, Pastor Casey has just said that he wants to be your pastor. And I'm going to need you all to respond. But the first people that I'm going to go talk to about this are the cars. So you all should be able to still hear me as I walk. I've never left the church before. <laughs> six months. It's been a unique first six months. I feel like I know all of your eyes and hopefully I'll know all of your, your mouse uh, sooner or later. Um, but God has good things in store for us and just very, very excited, very, very eager to see what God has coming Redeemer's way. 
Um, let's, let's share the gospel. Let's share the good news. Let's share the light of Christ in our community. I need your help, though. Um, you know, the, the best way to bring people into a church and the, the, the best way to, to, to share that gospel is through those personal invitations. Uh, so as we, we spread the gospel, as we grow our church, um, let's do this side by side. Um, God has good things in store for us. So thank you, thank you. So very glad and eager to be your pastor. So thank you, thank you, Pastor Juliet. Very good. Our worship continues this morning with our offertory prayer, which you can find on page 8 of your bulletin this Sunday morning. Merciful God, you have saved us for a purpose. We dedicate these gifts as we dedicate our lives to you, that you will make us fishers of people. Amen. The Lord be with you. Please rise as you're able. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Please remain standing. 
are so very, very grateful you are with us this morning. You are not obligated to stick around for our annual meeting. You're more than welcome to stick around, but it's just uh, church business and different things like that. So thank you, thank you for being with us and in worship this morning. We hope you'll come back. The other thing is we are looking for lectors, readers to read the first lesson, the second lesson, as well as our psalm. This is open to anybody in the congregation. We've had some of our confirmation students step up and do this. Um, my wife did it this morning. Um, anybody in the congregation that has that gift that can get up here and read, uh, we would love to have you. We're just hoping to get more people, more voices to do this. There is a sign-up sheet on your way home if you go through the main door. Just across from the church offices on that table, there's a sign-up sheet. We're looking for readers beginning the first Sunday of February. So on your way home, sign up for a Sunday. Um, our secretary, Sherry Smith, does a great job emailing you the different readings so that you'll have them. You can practice before you do on Sunday. But it's good to be with you. Let us end our worship before we go to our annual meeting with our blessing and sending. Repent and believe the good news that God is with us and calls us for a purpose. May the God of second chances renew your sense of call and inspire you to go out and share the good news of forgiveness and hope. Amen. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.